going to send me some cards. Okay. Maybe this one's hitting it right. Oh, hold on. There's that one. There's this one. Michael Huber's in the house. First in the live chat. Thanks there, Michael. Had a problem when I first started the stream. Hopefully it's back on track. Let me go out of here and go into the other one, which should be the right one. Oh, come on. What are you doing? me here. I don't know what my computer is doing now. I did some kind of update last night and it has been acting funny ever since. You gotta refresh. You gotta refresh. We'll get there in a second, guys. I don't like it when your computer does updates and then they change the way you're used to doing things. Anything to annoy the older generation, right? every day and you still mess up. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. No, I don't fix anything. It's just my computer says we gotta update your Google Chrome. We gotta update your browser. It's like every other day it's updating the browser. I don't know why it's doing that. His stream is up. I can't get it to act properly here. Hold on, let me go out of here, go to my channel. This is so stupid. Okay, now it shows it's live here. So let me click over here. Let me go here. Go here. Let me see if it's this one's here. Let me click on that one. 213 Michael Hubers that there is here. Dragon Fan Tim, you do this every day and still you still mess up. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Still not here. Don't have it update. And Michael Hubers, do you have a PC or a Mac? I've got both. I use two computers with two screens. So I can see this chat when I'm doing other things on my stream. I see it's on now, Donald. Thanks there, Bernie. <laughs> I know Bernie can see me. We're doing well. <laughs> oh my word. So we're going to start at 2.13 since I don't have my other chat. And we'll get everybody logged in here at 218, which it is now, so let's stop the early birds. Okay. 
Okay, so stop the early birds. Let me get everybody logged in. Oh, we do have three prizes on the wheel. Just so you do know, we do have, let me get the other screen up here so I can see what I'm doing. We do have three prizes on the wheel so far. We got over 300 entries in the wheel. So we're done good this month for a start. We are not even, no, we're just about one third of the way through the month with 334 entries. You can probably see that here, 334 entries. So let me get everybody in here. We got Michael Huber in here with a 2 plus. We will be having a trivia today. Um, it's an easy one from what I see. Uh, Dragon Fan Tim's in the house with a 2 plus. Uh, and Bernie H is in the house with a 2 plus. Big Ray here? I don't see Big Ray. <coughs> Michael Hugh. Paul Molitor. Yeah, I know. I got the, I got the, let me, oh no, that one's right. Molitor. Paul Molitor. That was the old, that, the, the other one was wrong. Maybe that's why it didn't like the way I had it up there. It's Paul Molitor. Pretty sure. Let me just double check something here. Yeah. M O L I T O R. Molitor. With an O, not an E. My other stream had it with an E, and I was going to edit it, but I don't have to now because we're on the right stream. All right. Don't forget, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for a while. We'll go for the thummies up, but I don't have any more product. This is my last blaster box. My last blaster box is on the stream. Get that off. Get that up here. Bernie H is here. So I got Bernie H, I got Dragon Fan Tim, and we've got Michael Huber. Is that the only three in here? Dragon Fan Tim, Michael Huber. Oh, Sensei Domino's in the house. Sensei Domino's in the house. And Bernie H. All right, so I've got Michael H, Michael Huber, Sensei Domino, uh, Dragon Fan Tim, and Bernie H. Go Cobras 28 just stopping by to say hi and have a great stream. Thanks, Eric. Go Cobra. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for coming by. All right. So we are going to refresh the chat real quick. I'm going to bring out our trivia for today and get into our trivia here. Um, but it's going to be a five pointer today. There is one correct answer. Whoever guesses the one correct answer will get five entries in the giveaway. Five entries in the giveaway. Our baseball birthdays for today, Thursday, April the 11th, is Brett Saberhagen, Mark Texiera, uh, Jason Baratek, and Sid Munch. Okay? And the trivia is going to be baseball by the numbers. Let me get it ready here real quick. Baseball by the numbers. This one should be pretty quick. Baseball by the numbers today says, Name the last player to hit 50 home runs in a season. Is it A, Aaron Judge? Is it B, Pete Alonzo? Is it C, Guy Giancarlo Stanton? Or is it D, Chris Davis? Start your guessing now. D, 
boom, Dragon Fan Tim got it right with Aaron Judge with the New York Yankees. So congratulations there, Dragon Fan Tim. You got the five points today for our soul trivia of the day. Okay, read the back for you. Tomorrow will be another easy one. But then we will have a weekend tomorrow. Let me go over the weekend real quick. The weekend will be another easy one, too. Got a whole bunch of easy ones. Five, five pointers coming up here in the next not-so-seeable future. All right, so we've got baseball by the numbers. All right. And it said, name the last player to hit 50 home runs in a season. It was A, Aaron Judge. And the answer on the back reads, A, Aaron Judge hit 62 in 2022, breaking the American League mark set by Roger Maris in 1961. So not too bad. 62, he broke it. And Maris was the one before that in 1961 that had the record. Congratulations there, Dragon Fan Tim, on getting that one correct. Oh, man, no. Okay. So, got your five pointers on there. I'm going to put this off to the side. We do have a binder here, in case you're wondering. This is my binder for... Paul Molitor. Hall of Fame binder for Paul Molitor. I didn't count up the cards in here, but um, definitely have a couple hundred cards by Paul Molitor in here. You can see the binder there. We will be going through this binder right after his biography. And then we will open up, after we go through the binder, the last Top Stadium Club plaster box. Okay, so now that we've got that all settled, I'll put this here. Let me get our Paul Molitor. So today we're going to have Paul Molitor, and then tomorrow we will have Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan will be our final Hall of Famer for this week. But we are going to do Paul Molitor first. Paul Leo Molitor played with Milwaukee with the American League. Um, in 1978 through 1992. Toronto in the American League, 1993 to 1995. And Minnesota in the American League, 1996 to 1998. So he had a 20-year career, it looks like. A remarkably consistent contact hitter, an aggressive base runner with extraordinary instincts. One of three players with more than 3,000 hits. 600 doubles and 500 steals. A career 306 hitter ranks 8th all time with 3,319 hits. Hit safely in 39 consecutive games in 1987. A great clutch performer, as evidenced by his record 5 hits in Game 1 of the 1982 World Series for the Brewers and the World Series MVP honors for the champion Blue Jays in 1993, elected to seven all-star teams. So there you go. That is our Hall of Famer for today. I'll put him front and center right there. Get this kind of lined up here so we're ready to go. And we will get into Paul Molitor's biography. Why is that always coming up and getting in the way? what its problem is. Okay, make sure we're good there. Refresh the live. 62. Okay, so let me get ready here. We're going to do Give me just one momento here, and we will be where we need to be. I wanted to get a drink of water anyway while we're waiting.
Paul Molitor. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoy this. At least Huber said he, he recognizes the name. Paul Leo Molitor, born August 22nd, 1956. He was born a year after my wife was born. Nicknamed Molly and the Igniter. As an American former professional baseball player and manager, during his 21-year playing career in Major League Baseball, he played for the Milwaukee Brewers, 78 through 92, the Toronto Blue Jays, 1993 to 95, um, and Minnesota Twins, 1996 to 1998. He was known for his exceptional hitting and speed. He made seven All-Star Game appearances and was the World Series Most Valuable Player in 1993. Molitor currently ranks 10th on the all-time MLB career hit list with 3,319. He is one of only five players in history with 3,000 plus hits, a lifetime 300 batting average, and 500 plus career stolen bases. Molitor grew up in Minnesota and attended the University of Minnesota before beginning his MLB career. After his retirement as a player, he served as a coach for the Seattle Mariners and the Twins. In 2004, he was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility, becoming one of the first players enshrined after spending a significant portion of his career as a designated hitter. He was a finalist for the Major League Baseball All-Century Team on November 3, 2014. Molitor was announced as the 13th manager of the Twins, and he managed the team for four seasons and was fired on October 2018. As far as his early life, Molitor was born in St. Paul, Minnesota after graduating from Creighton High School. He was selected in the 28th round of the 1974 MLB Draft as a pitcher by the St. Louis Cardinals. He opted instead to attend college at the University of Minnesota, where he was a three-year starter for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Molitor earned All-American honors as a shortstop for his sophomore year. Between his sophomore and junior seasons, Molitor suffered a broken jaw. With his jaw wired shut for eight weeks, Molitor lost 40 pounds. After his junior year in college, the Milwaukee Brewers selected Molitor in the first round with the third overall selection in the 1977 Major League Baseball draft. He signed with the Brewers and began his professional career with the Class A Burlington Bees of the Midwest League. In 64 games with Burlington, Molitor hit for a 346 batting average, 8 home runs, 50 runs batted in, RBIs and 14 stolen bases. As far as his playing career, Milwaukee Brewers in 1978 through 1992, Molitor began as a shortstop, then moved to second base. When Robin Yount returned from a brief injury, he made his MLB debut in 1978, playing in 125 games and hitting 273 with six home runs. 45 RBIs, and 30 stolen bases. In 1981, he spent time at center field and right field to avoid injuries associated with infield play. Molitor was moved to third base before the 1982 season, and Molitor was part of a young Milwaukee Brewers team that lost the 1982 World Series in seven games to the St. Louis Cardinals. Molitor batted 355 during the series in Game 1, and he had five hits. A World Series record during the 1982 season, he hit 302 and led the American League with 136 runs scored. On May 12th, he hit three home runs against the Royals in a 9-7 loss. Molitor struggled with injuries for much of his early career, being placed on the disabled list six times between 1980 and 1986. In 1984, Molitor struggled with elbow problems, played in only 13 games, and ultimately underwent Tommy John surgery in an attempt to salvage his career. He played in 140 games in 1985, hitting 297 with 10 home runs and 48 RBIs. 
he followed that with a 281 average, nine home runs, and 55 RBIs in 1986. That year, he suffered a hamstring injury, returned for a few days, then re-injured it. He played in 105 games that season. Molitor attracted national media attention in 1987 during his 39-game hitting streak. Near the end of the streak, columnist Mike Downey wrote down, The amazing thing about Paul Molitor's recent batarama is not that he has hit in 33 straight games, but he has played in 33 straight games. The streak ended with Molitor on deck on in the on-deck circle when Rick Manning got a game-ending hit to beat the Cleveland Indians on August 26, 1987. Fans booed Manning for the driving in, for driving in the winning run and thus depriving Molitor of one last chance to reach 40 games. The streak stands as the fifth longest in modern-day baseball history and remains the longest since Pete Rose's 44-game streak in 1978. Then he went on to the Toronto Blue Jays. Although Molitor wanted to remain with Milwaukee when he became a free agent after the 1982 season, the franchise offered him a one-year contract with $900,000 pay cut to $2.5 million, while the Toronto Blue Jays offered a three-year deal with $13 million deal equivalent to $27.2 million in 2023. Leading to his signing with the Blue Jays, agent Ron Simon said, I was also talking with Milwaukee, but it became clear to us that Milwaukee didn't have the same kind of interest in signing Molitor, perhaps because of their financial situation. Molitor quickly became an offensive judgment, juggernaut. In 1993, Molitor led the American League in plate appearances with 725 and hits with 211 and hit 332 with 22 home runs and 111 RBIs. Returning to the playoffs for the first time since 1982, he was a key part of the Blue Jays' second world championship. Molitor hit two doubles, two triples, and two home runs in the series, earning the World Series MVP and tied a World Series record by batting 500, 12 for 24, in the six-game series. In addition, after playing as a designated hitter all season, Molitor played Game 3 of the World Series at first base and Games 4 and 5 at third base in the games played at Philadelphia. In 1994, the strike-shortened season, Molitor hit 341 and led the American League in games played, 15, 115, and singles 107. He also stole 20 bases that season without ever being caught, one short of Kevin McReynolds' 1988 Major League record of 21. Molitor's average dropped to 270. In 1995, his lowest mark in more than 10 years. Hold on a second. My daughter was trying to call me. Let me see what she wanted. Okay, she probably called my wife's phone. Hopefully my wife answered her phone. All right, then on to the Minnesota Twins in 1996 to 1998. He left the Blue Jays after the 1995 season and joined the, his hometown Minnesota Twins for the final three seasons of his career, where he acquired his 3,000th hit. He was the first player to reach 3,000 hits plateau with a triple. Molitor was relishing the opportunity to play with the Twins' Super City, Kirby Puckett. Cards in my car with our Posada. How you doing? Oh yeah, by the way, just I'll throw this out there again. I'm doing a whatnot auction. I'm probably going to do this one as a dollar auction, starting everything off at a dollar. Okay. So, um, but yeah, that'll be at five o'clock tomorrow, right after I do my live stream for our Hall of Fame Friday with Joe Morgan. All right. Um, uh, Molitor was relishing the opportunity to play with twin superstar Kirby Puckett. 
a pocket developed career ending glaucoma during the spring training in 1996 and never played again. In 1996, Molitor became the second 40 year old after Hall of Famer Sam Rice to have a 200 hit season, leading the leg with 225 while also leading the leg in singles with 167. Molitor also remains the last MLB player to drive in 100 or more runs in a season while hitting fewer than 10 home runs, 9 home runs, and 113 RBIs. Molitor hit 305 in 1997, his 12th season, to finish with a batting average higher than 300. In 1998, he hit 281 with four home runs, 69 RBIs, and nine stolen bases. Other than his very brief 1984 season, the 1998 season was the first in Molitor's career in which he did not reach double-digit stolen base totals. He retired in December saying, my heart tells me I've done what I can do on the field and in this game, Molitor said. I'm happy to leave it playing my last season in a Twins uniform. Now I'm going to redirect my efforts to find out what else the future holds. Second here. All right. Then on to his coaching and managerial career. After retiring as a player, Molitor remained with the Twins as a bench coach for three seasons. He was considered a leading candidate to manage the team when Tom Kelly retired after 2001, but he declined in part because the Twins were still being targeted for a potential contraction. Molitor was hitting a hitting coach with the Mariners in 2004. He then spent the 2005 to 2013 seasons in the Twins organization as a minor league base running fielding instructor. Molitor joined the Twins coaching staff in 2014 to oversee base running, bunting, infield instruction, and positioning. Then he went to the Minnesota Twins, hired Molitor to fill their manager vacancy in 2015 and introduced him in a press conference on November 4th 2014. At the end of the 2017 season, the Twins announced that Molitor would receive a three-year contract extension through 2020. Molitor was rewarded for his efforts in leading the Twins back to the postseason after losing 103 games the season prior, the first team in history to achieve this feat by being named American League Manager of the Year in November 2017. He became only the second person to be elected to the Hall of Fame as a player and win the Manager of the Year award behind Frank Robinson, who was named American League Manager of the Year in 1989 while managing the Baltimore Orioles. On October 2, 2018, the Twins fired Mol Molitor as manager, but expressed that they had interest in having him continue to maintain a role with the team in some capacity. He finished with a record of 305 wins, 343 losses, and 648 games, and Molitor later rejoined the Twins as a special assistant with roving instructor duties for the team's minor league affiliates. As far as his accomplishments, Molitor's lifetime statistics include 2,683 games played, 1,000 782 runs scored, 3,319 hits, 605 doubles, 114 triples, 234 home runs, 1,307 runs batted in, 1,094 walks, a 306 batting average, and a 504 stolen bases. His 3,319 hits rank him ninth all time. In addition, he batted 368 in five postseason series and was an All-Star seven times. Molitor recorded these statistics while missing nearly 500 games due to various injuries throughout his career. In 1999, Molitor ranked number 99 on the Sporting News list of 100 greatest baseball players. And he was nominated to a finalist for the Major League Baseball All-Century team. Molitor was elected to the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame in 1999. On June 11, 1999, the Brewers retired Molitor's number four during a ceremony at Milwaukee County Stadium. 
Bolitzer announced that if he went into the Hall of Fame, he would do so as a brewer. On January 6, 2004, he was elected into the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility with 85.2% of the votes. True to his word, he joined Robin Yount as the only Hall of Famers to be depicted on their plaques with the Brewers caps. At the time of his induction, Molitor was the hitting coach for the Seattle Mariners. Molitor is one of five players in Major League history with at least 300 hits, 300 lifetime batting average, and, a fi and 500 stolen bases. The other four are Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, Eddie Collins, and Ichiro Suzuki. Only Ichiro and Molitor played beyond 1930. Molitor is the only player ever to accomplish those feats and hit at least 200 home runs. Molitor is also the first player in World Series history to have at least two home runs, two doubles, and two triples in one series in 1993. God is great in the house. How you doing there, Titus? Da, da, da. Cards is great here. Bernie H. All right. He is a member of an ex exclusive club, hitting 300 or better in full seasons across three decades, 1970s, 80s, and 90s. He hit better than 300 a dozen times in his career, including Game 1 of the 1982 World Series. He recorded eight five hit games and four 200 plus hit seasons in his 21 year major league career. As of 2021, Molitor is the last major league player to execute the rare feat of stealing home plate at least 10 times over the course of a career. As far as his personal life, during the early years of his career, Molitor began using cocaine and marijuana. During the trial of a drug dealer in 1984, Molitor admitted that he had used drugs. Many years later, he said, there are things you're not so proud of. Failures, mistakes, dabblings in drugs, a young ball player in the party scene. Part of it was peer pressure. I was young and single and hung around with the wrong people. You learn from it. You find a positive in it. You make it appreciate it makes you appreciate the things that are good. He claims to have stopped using drugs in 1981 and has since visited schools to lecture about dangers of drug use. Molitor married Linda Kaplan in 1981. Before their 2003 divorce, it was revealed that he had fathered a son in an extramarital affair with Joanne Andreo and was paying child support. During his legal separation from Linda, he fathered another child with the woman who would become his second wife, Destiny. They had a third child together and later divorced. During his Hall of Fame induction speech, Molitor mentioned his difficult family relationships. The divorce from Linda, Lin, Linda caused such hard feelings that his ex-wife and daughter almost did not attend his induction ceremony. Molitor's nephew is professional disc golfer Kale Leviska. So there you have it, Paul Molitor's uh, Hall of Fame biography. Again, he was a designated hitter, an infielder, and a manager during his career. Um, he, he was born August 22, 1956, and is currently 67 years old. Uh, he was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. He batted right through right his MLB debut April 7, 1978 for the Milwaukee Brewers. Last MLB appearance September 27, 1998 for the Minnesota Twins. His MLB statistics for his career, batting average 306, hits 3,319, home runs 234, runs batted in 1,307, Stolen bases, 504 is managerial record, 305 wins, 343 losses, his winning percentage of .471. And again, the teams he played with, the Milwaukee Brewers, 1978-92, the Toronto Blue Jays, 1993-95, to 
and the Minnesota Twins, 1996 to 1998. When he was a manager, he managed the Minnesota Twins, 2015 to 2018. His career highlights and awards, seven times All-Star, 1980, 85, 88, 1991, through 1994, World Series champion in 1993, World Series MVP 1993, four-time Silver Slugger Award 1987, 88, 93, and 96. He was an American League Manager of the Year in 2017, Milwaukee Brewers, number four retired, American Family Field Walk of Fame, Milwaukee Brewers Wall of Honor, the Major League Baseball All-Time Team, and a member of the Nash National Baseball Hall of Fame inducted in 2004 on his first ballot with 85.2% of the vote. So there you go again, Hall of Fame biography for Paul Molitor. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that biography. I'm going to put this one off to the side here for now. That indicates we're done with the biography. Put this back up here. All right. Let me refresh the live chats. So, now we will go into Paul Molitor's Hall of Fame Binder. I think this will work like this. Yeah, and then you can almost actually, oh, there we go. We can probably get almost the whole binder in there. You know what? I'm going to move these out of the way for now so we can scoot this binder up so you can see the fronts and the backs of the cards. I think I got this all figured out now. Let me just set these off to the side here. I'm going to move this over out of the way for now, too. I can scooch this up, and we can almost get... No, not that. That's the wrong one, Blom, no. Let's see. Can I scooch this? There we go, we can almost get the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to start off with this card. I don't know, if th I think he does have more than one Hall of Fame card, but this is a Hall of Fame rookie card I had in my Hall of Fame rookie card box for Paul Molitor. And when we get to Tramel, I'll be able to use this one for Tr Tramel too. And we got uh, Mickey Klutz with the Yankees and UL Washington with Kansas City. Rookie shortstops. Okay. So we'll put that back in there. Again, we'll just go through these. If you guys want, I can pull one out and show it to you a little bit closer if we need to. But for sake of time, I'm just going to go through. Um, these are all pretty much in here. I put them in order by card number. Uh, that's just the way my my brain works as far as when I do get new cards to try and put them into the binder I don't have to look by year or card type like whether it's a Fleer or a Donruss or an Upper Deck Collector's Choice Opeachy Tops so that's that's pretty much my reasoning behind doing them numbered because then you'd be surprised we'll go through I'll point out some differences on different cards as we go through these um, I have 40 minutes left and then I'm off oh, okay Robert so again tomorrow 
um, I will be doing uh, one dollar auctions all my cards will start at a, at a dollar okay because I'm, I'm slowly figuring out how what not works so if I started at a dollar that means if you bid on it it goes to two dollars goes up in dollar increments so just keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing whatnot. If they started at three dollars, that means when you place a bet, it goes to four. And I was realizing, oh wow, now I'm I'm learning as my, as I do my auctions how to improve on doing them better. Okay, so we're gonna go through this binder, and then we will go through the final top stadium club box uh, from my from the case I had that a Facebook member sent to me I blew my mind away I was like that's cool I like that though okay so you've already seen this page so we'll go we got the uh, top stadium club um, this one is a special back I don't know if all the top stadium clubs for that uh, for that year were that way but this one this Paul Molitor is because oh it's because it's a member's choice all right and then we got the ten of diamonds then we start off with card number one here from the tops gallery pretty cool but then I'll just turn the pages I won't do it one per minute or anything like that but um, you can see this is from uh, Major League Baseball 1992 Aces deck of cards. So that's a deck of playing cards, and Paul Molitor is the Ten of Diamonds. All right. I will point out when I get different ones, like this is an odd set from Revco. Got a superstar there. Memorable moments from Kmart. Okay. And our next page here. When I get the, the variation ones, I'll pull them out and I'll show you the difference on what I'm talking about. You could have color variations. You could have, I don't know if I've got any errors. This one shows his rookie gold cup card, but I don't think that's the, his gold cup year. I think it's just a compilation or something of a simulation of his uh, gold cup card. Got highlights. We got this mini card down here. Okay. Then we've got uh, score 91, Don Russ 92, another mini card up here. Then we got put in crooked. Alright, 1984. Paul Molitor, like my favorite wall hanging up there. A whole sheet. Of 1984 baseball cards, we got a bazooka card down here. 1996 Pinnacle. That's the year my my cousin played for uh, professional baseball. All right, and then we've got like yeah, this one right here. I'll go into this one in a minute here. That's uh, the Fleer. That's a studio. But these two here, they look like they're identical, right? But here, I'll pull them out real quick and I'll show you the differences here. It's ever so light, but the back you can notice too. The back you can notice the, the one, this is the light blue, this is a dark blue. And it must have been on the print run and stuff because. You can see here the dark blue in the brewer's hat and then the light blue in the brewer's hat. I think those are just uh, where they mix their, their ink up different. So they got two different colors on this. Again, the dark blue, the light blue. So that's, that's why I'll have some that look like duplicates. I noticed that when I was putting my Ken Griffey's together my Cal Ripkins together so that's how I do my sort process I sort all my cards in my collection for a player and then I put them in numerical sequence and then I go through all the cards that are duplicates 
and see if there's any differences in there. Just in case you're wondering there. Anybody seen uh, Mickey around? I just want to send him, him a message so when I'm done my live stream. I keep forgetting to do this. Just had to had to send Mickey a question. I think I might have wronged him, I, and I want to. I need to make it right. All right, there we go. We got an ultra tops 40 years. Here's another one here. I won't pull these out, but this is a dark red. This is a lighter red. You can see the difference in the the coloring of this card is darker, more richer, and this is well, this one's sharper. This one's darker. But uh, this one here down here is a, one of those 3D cards. If I move it a little bit, you know. Sports Flix card. Then we have a. Uh, so, oh, this one here I had put in. Uh, oh, I missed a card. I missed a card. So I had to make this one is just one in here. And I do those from time to time so I can readjust when I get new cards to fill in gaps. We got the Paul Molitor here and the tops. I like all the top sets. I know it is neat to see them like if I put all the top all his tops cards and see through the years the different angles and stuff. But for me, this is the way to, to put my binders in order um, like this. So this one here is uh, that's not a die cut, it just looks like I think they have a die cut version, but I don't have that one. Uh, there's another one, Paul Molitor here on the uh, Fleers. They did it a lot on Fleer products. Color variation, this is the light blue brewer, dark brew, dark blue brewer. There's a, a Don Russ, 1988. Uh, Fleer 92, Fleer 91. One. Sometimes it just works out number wise because that's 178 and that's 182. All right. Paul Molitor Studio. This is a, this was an early uh, twins Paul Molitor where they started making shiny cards. Because this was from. 1997 on that one there. But uh, really neat there. I like these ones here where it shows the maps. Paul Molitor Bowman. He did the, a lot of the cards that that way that year. 88 Don Runs. Leaf product. 93 Fleer. The upper deck. All right. I think I have one or two insert or short print cards, but for the most part, it's 91 upper deck collector's choice, 90 Fleer, another upper deck Fleer. 85 Donruss. Another one 
here with the tops did the same thing darker lighter not as noticeable as some of the others okay then I'll read that in a second here while I get ready to finish up the book all right Then, oh, these two, this is the, the base one, and this is the electric diamond one. It says electric diamond here, and it's in that little silver. Got the pinnacle idols. Got the younger Fleer tops. Uh, upper deck. Score. And pretty soon we'll be getting into some of the, the insert cards and stuff like that. Those go at the end after the numerical cards. Another Paul Mulder Stadium Club. This is a uh, Topps Gold card. There. Okay. Now we're getting closer to, you'll see some different oddballish cards here. Got the checklist, Paul Molitor, 1990 Paul Molitor, uh, 89 Paul Molitor, MVP. Then we got a 1988 All-Star set. These are mini sets. We got a Rite Aid Team MVP with Molitor. We got a post-1992 Collector's Choice. These are all like mini sets, like 17 of 30. So it would be like a 30 card set with different star players and stuff like that that they would do back in the day. And then after that, we're still in those sets. We got the limited edition sets Paul Molitor, The Big Show, um, this one here. Another small inset, uh, 43 of 60. Got a Paul Molitor here, 57 of 60. Then we got a, a Diamond King here. Uh, Creators, Molitor, Pinnacle Creators. We got an older 1990 Classic card. And then uh, kind of finishing it up here with the Wonder Years Upper Deck Company, LLC Wonder Years. It's the uh, uh, Decade Dominators. Paul Molitor, Designated Hitter, WY20, and a T34. And that's pretty much my smaller but nice binder of Paul Molitor cards. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. He's been playing his game. All right, let me put this off to the side real quick. We'll get this done and we'll get our, our next and final item here on this. Oh, sorry. That wasn't an earthquake. That was just me. All right, let me set this here for a second. Let me get these stands back up. Hold on. We got that guy. Two, three, four. I think I can do five and then put the post. Get the post, the Hall of Fame postcard back out on the, on the board here. That's where we usually put the, or where I usually put the uh, master photo. I think I'm down to just needing a couple master photos, so I'll probably go on eBay and get the rest of those for last year's set and this year's set. So, 
trying to do the master photo, but I gotta find the right right Ultra Pro pages. I think it could be a six spot if I do two, four, six. I don't know if they make one for the master photos or not. I gotta try and find it. the BCW pages for the master photos and that type size card. So we're gonna open up our last blaster here. Oh yeah, let me do a refresh here and see how many thumbs up we are did get up to. Probably not much. We only got seven thumbs up right now. Yep, we're at eight. And that's fine. Okay, we've got the eight packs here for our last blaster box. And Julio! I, th I think I've got two, but maybe I don't even have one yet. Can't remember for sure if I got the. Oh, sorry. We're empty. Of course, you can see I got everything out anyway. So, Julio. That would have been cool if it would have been a signed one. I never got any of the signed master photos yet. I take it they're very hard to pull. So, let's get going here. busy relaxing and taking a break from cards probably. Boy, got the King Griffey Jr. bobbleheads coming up this weekend. Too bad I couldn't go out to T-Mobile Park. I'll try and see if anybody's gonna sell any of our bobbleheads. Sometimes afterwards they put them on on eBay. If, I, if, if, if they're not selling them for a crazy, crazy price, sometimes I'll pick some up and add them to my bobblehead collection. One of these days I should just show my bobbleheads. That would be a cool stream. Just sharing what my bobbleheads and different oddball pieces are, right? Okay. So let's see. Let's get this up here. Do a refresh on the chat. And let's start going, gripping and ripping this last box off here. Let me get this here. All right, finishing off the last box, box number 40 from the case. Can you imagine we've gone through 40 of these boxes already? Johnny Bench, Hall of Famer, base. Uh, Robbie Ray, Seattle Mariners, base. And we've got a Julio Urias. That's a cool looking card. Base 107. We've got a Jonathan Aranda, Tampa Bay. Rookie card, black. Our blacks go right here. And our Jordan Diaz rookie card for the Athletics. Base. So nothing. Earth shattering in that first pack. Pack number two. Oh, I gotta take that off my description. Unless somebody sends me some more product. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle with the Baltimore Orioles base. All right, Garrett Mitchell. Rookie card for the Brew Crew. Base. Sometimes you never can tell. I know, I'm pretty sure they put them backwards if they're not. Jordan Alvarez with the Astros. Uh, base. I might put a list up of the insert cards I need for this Top Stadium Club 
let that run for a little while, see if anybody can help me out with some of the insert cards for this, for the little subsets. I haven't decided if I, if, we'll just see how close I get after. I mean, I know I've got some spots to fill. The VV Bobby Witt Jr. Virtuosus of Velocity card. Last card is the Ozzy Albies with the Atlanta Braves base card. All right. Crossover Paranormal Society. How you doing there, John? Ooh, this is a bonus bonus pack. Looks like we got two, four, six, seven cards in here. Uh, Jose Ramirez. Is that the Guardians? Yep, the Guardians, base. Jose Altuve with the uh, Houston Astros, base. Then we got Matt Olson with the Braves, uh, base. Okay, got our first backwards card. We might have a few of them in this one. Tyler Freeman, rookie card, base. Let's see what we got here. We might have three color variations here. Rowdy Talese, base. It's a red color variation. Then we got a Jason Veritek with the Red Sox, red variation. And a Max Freed base color variation red. So three reds there. Pack number four, the halfway mark of the box. And again, just throwing this out there real quick because there might be a few people here that weren't here earlier. But um, yeah, tomorrow right after my live stream. Uh, or five o'clock, maybe a little bit before. That'll give the time beforehand to allow people to show up for the sale and stuff. Um, I'll be running a bunch of my stuff for uh, one dollar auctions. I'm gonna start off at a dollar, unless one or there might be some cards that might come up that I might want to run for a couple bucks more or something. But Chris Bryant with the Colorado Rockies base. Uh, Josh Gibson, Hall of Famer, base. Got a Babe Ruth, Hall of Famer, base. Then we've got a Manny Machado with the Padres, color variation, red. And we've got a Rogers Hornsby's with the Cardinals, base. Okay, first half of the box, a lot of reds and a black. Moving into the second half of the box. All right. So hopefully you guys are ready to have some fun. Oh, I think we got a shiny card in here. I think it's a triumvirate. Uh, Nick Prado, rookie card for the Royals base. And we've got a Juan Soto. Ooh, that is, oh, is that a white, white? Oh my word. Uh, we got a Juan Soto here, base. Ooh, is this one gonna be numbered like that Julio I got? This is a Vinny Pasquantino with the Kansas City Royals. Rookie card, chrome white. But I don't know if this is the pearl or not. We're gonna find out in just a second here. But I'm gonna put it down there for now and see. So we've got Christian Yelich with the Brewers base. Color variation, the sepia. And 
Oh, look at that. We got the Vinny Pasquantino base card. Along with this beautiful card here. It almost looks like the same one like we got from. It's a 199, but it's not a short printed one. But it is the image very or the 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 white white. When you get the white chrome and the white stadium club, you'll see the different colors like it's gray. But this is white, the white white. So this is the pearl, but it's not the short printed version. It is the pearl, but just not the short printed version. Oh yes, that is a very nice card. I know who's a big Kansas City fan. I do know. Jason's not here today, is he? Walking 99? I didn't see him lurking about anywhere. But that is a box hit for sure. Okay, pack number six. As soon as I get done with all the packs, I'll pull out that uh, Julio for those that didn't see when I pulled that a couple boxes back. Chris Sale with the Boston Red Sox base. Uh, Ryan Creedler, rookie card for the Detroit Tigers base. We got the Matt Chapman. Matt Chapman with the Blue Jays base. We got the, the Chief Fantasy, Pete Alonzo. CF, CF Pro 9. Then uh, Gliber Torres with the New York Yankees base. Okay, pack number seven. Lars Newtbar with the Cardinals base. Josh Bell with the Guardians base. Got the Ryan Sandberg base, Hall of Famer. Jonathan Aranda rookie card for the Tampa Bay Rays base. Then the Tony Gwynn color variation. Who do we got underneath him? Noah Syndergaard with the Dodgers base. And our Tony Gwynn is a red Tony Gwynn. That's pretty cool. Kevin's models and more would like that one. All right, last pack magic. We already got the box hit, that's for sure. This Vinny Pasquatino for the Kansas City Royals. If you guys see uh, Locka99 or Jason around, around the channels, let him know what I pulled. He'll be happy. He'll be happy. Oh, I think we got a going yard. Uh, Sandy Alcantara. Those are the going yard cards. are pretty hard to pull. Uh, Sandy Alcantara. Uh, base. Trey Turner with the Phillies base. The uh, do it this way. We'll leave the the going yard for last. Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer with the Oakland Athletics base. And Buster Posey. Ooh, and it's a red. It's a going yard red in color variation. Boom! Is that a Mike Trout? That is a Mike Trout going yard. Oh my word. Buster Posey 
with the San Francisco Giants base. Now we go, got the Going Yard Red. Going Yard Red version for Mike Trout. That's pretty cool. I do like that one. That'll go in my Mike Trout collection, that's for sure. I know, a little late to the game. But he is a New Jersey boy. So, cool. For the going yard, red. We'll put this up here. Okay, so yeah. I know I've got, I think I've got one other one like this that's not short print. Let me get my Julio Rodriguez one out that I put in one touch as soon as I fold it. Okay, look at that one touch. Oh, It's pretty much, well, this one's a white. Or a, a, I think that's more the pearl. But this is still a cool card here. Because uh, Julio Rodriguez, the CMP code is uh, $21.99, which is a short print. And the Julio is definitely, it's 2 out of 30. So it's a low number, too. And then the, the Vinny Pasquatino is a white white and it is a CMP code 2199, which is cool. So let Jason know that. But this is my Julio I pulled a couple a couple shows ago. I need to put it in the title instead. This is an awesome Cool. It's in with all my slabs and stuff for now. I don't know. I'm, probably if I sent it in to get graded, it probably get, hopefully, it, I would think it would get a good grade. Would be my guess. I think it might be off-center, but I don't know if these are just all the same. Could be left to right. They might peg it for not being fully centered but I don't know what their guidelines are on the card sets they would probably know so there we go uh, I'll do a refresh not that it makes a difference at this point I don't have any more product to open for the most part we did reach double digits but I don't have anything doubled up to open. <laughs> I don't have anything to open really. So I don't know what I could even... All I have is my my Fairfield Fridays. That'll be my next six weeks for my Fairfields. But we will do definitely this. Reds fan. My birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday, Reds fan. I thought I am named Ryan. I figured it was probably you, Ryan. You're always changing your name in the channel. You like making it fun for people to know who's who's here and who's there and who's around right you just like that but let's sing happy birthday to ryan happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear ryan happy birthday to you and many more it's all around for you Give Ryan a what? I can't see what Dragon Fan Tim said. I could maybe send him a Reds card. Is he a Cincinnati Red fan? Can't remember. There we go. 
we've got it all. We've got a little over an hour, hour and 15 minutes into the stream. We did all our content for today. I'll put the rest of these, file these away. Julio. I think it might be an extra Julio. Don't I have a Julio? But I can't remember where I put my Julio card. If I do. Let me check in my Julio binder here. This is my Julio binder, by the way. Can you see that? It's my Julio binder. This is from Julio's, the official serial of Julio Rodriguez. It's my Julio binder. And there's another one on the back. Can't miss this binder in my house, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to have to put it in here. Oh, I know I don't have pages here, so maybe I, maybe this is my first first Julio. One of these days, I'll, I'll give you guys, show you guys my Julio binder and do an update. How's that sound? Did you eat the cereal? Nope, it's still in the box back here on the display. I did not eat the cereal. No, but they, uh, a friend of mine say they taste almost like Fruit, fruit Loops. If you've ever had Fruit Loops. They say they pretty much taste like that. But no, I did not eat the cereal. It's not expired yet. It's not expired yet. Let me see the expiration date on the top. Oh, as long as I eat it by the 26th of April, this month, it'll be good. I could, I could sit down and eat the cereal and just save the box, but I'd rather save the whole box. <laughs> All right, so let's get everybody in here for the two-minute warning here. two-minute warning here real quick and get things wrapped up for today. Again, tomorrow we'll be doing our next Hall of Famer, Joe Morgan. And then um, we will have a Fairfield Friday, so we have a Fairfield product we'll open. And then after that, I'm going to have to make it a shorter show tomorrow because then, um, and if I don't make it here till just slightly after two, just keep an eye out for the, the uh, notation there. Or the 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 time that I normally go, you you'll still get a notification. So then just go ahead and go live there, okay? So Bernie's here with the two uh, cards in my car with our Posadas here with a two plus two. Um, Sensei Dominoes here with a two. Uh, cards in my car with our Posada. Got him. Reds fan. Two plus two. Got gotcha, you, Ryan. All right. Um, crossover paranormal cops. The two plus two, two, okay. In um. the two minute warning, it's three thirty three. So where are we at? Dragon fan, sensei, sensei, dragon fan. God is great. God is great. With a two plus two. 
Hopefully some of you people are paying attention to that. And Michael Huber, I'll give him the plus two. So don't think we'll be up to 400 by tomorrow, but maybe after tomorrow we'll be up to 400 entries for four prizes on the wheel. No spamming in chat. That's okay. Here, there, and everywhere. Uh, I didn't get any notification either since I... Uh, sometimes you might need to go out, uncheck... Oh, Boomslang was in the house. Boomslang is here. Boomslang's in the house with a two. And Big Ray gets a, a proxy two, plus two. So everybody got a two plus two today. Whether you're here at the beginning, whether you're here at the end, or if you're faithful, com faith faithful to the channel. Okay, I'll even get Faith, Family, and Sports. They haven't been here forever, but he is a Patreon, so I'll give him a bonus entry today. Cause I want it. You miss me. I didn't miss you, Boomslang. Okay, so um. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to sign off for today. Um, uh, they worked yesterday, must. What's that? They worked yesterday, must be missed up today. Oh, that's okay, Sensei. That's okay. So until then, this has been Don Blombaugh with Hall of Fame Biography, Episode 218, Paul Molitor with our trivia 2023 top stadium club blaster box with lots of sweetness we got today especially this one here Vinny Pasquatino that's a pearl card but not the short print version where it's serial numbered on the back like the one I got from of Julio but it is a white white and we got a red going yard Mike Trout so other than that We've had a grand old day today. It's been fun. We finished off the top stadium club case. So everything is good there. So without any further ado, this has been Don Blum. We will see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then don't forget, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be doing my next whatnot auction. Okay, it'll be my third one. I did one last week. Didn't turn out too good, but that's okay. And I will get to sharing it out. Not only on my YouTube channel, but on my Facebook. I might do Facebook Live again with my sale. See how if it goes how it goes tomorrow. Those when they do show up from Facebook, I could probably put a link in the stream so that they could go and sign up to go on whatnot and try and buy some cards in the auction. Again, tomorrow's auction will be $1 starts. $1 starts, for the most part, no matter what card it is. I'm going to have fun for, with it tomorrow and see if we can have fun in the channel. So until then, you all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed night. And if you're available, Mickey, like to chat with you on the phone real quick when I'm done here. Until then, y'all take care. We'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, have a wonderful and blessed day. Goodbye for now, and take care.